Welcome to the channel. This is the first part in a new series for workers and resources Soviet Republic for new players. This video will consist of three parts. The first part will be an introduction into why I'm making the series, what the objectives are. It will also include a, a kind of outline of what various videos will comprise of and also the assumptions that I'm making from the perspective of who I expect to watch this video. Now, the second part, we're going to go through the new game setup process. And as part of that, I'm going to recommend a setting which would be for the first game that you ever play. But it will also apply to people who maybe just want to learn the game. And then the final part will be uh, the going through the steps in choosing your starting location on the main map. So that out of the way, let's just move straight into the introduction. Why am I making this series? Well, simply is the fact that I quite often get comments on my normal workers and resources republic where people are asking quite genuine questions about how does a certain mechanic work and um, and what's the best way to do something. And so I've been thinking about the fact that since 2019, lots of new mechanics have been added to the game. Well, it always had a very steep learning curve, but that Kurt's learning curve is getting steeper and steeper by with every successive new mechanic being added. So what I did was, is I went back and looked at the game as it is now and decided and decided on how I would approach learning the game if I was a new player. And that resulted in the conclusion that maybe the, the new players need a specific series which is not a tutorial on the mechanics. And I want to emphasize this. This isn't me going through describing each mechanic. I think there's been plenty of tutorials made on that area. This is, is aimed primarily at new players who want to get into the game with a kind of path of least, least resistance. The assumptions I'm making is, is exactly what I've said, is that this is aimed at new players. Therefore, it'd be very low level, especially the first two or three videos. Now, the structure of this series is going to be this first video is very much, as I already mentioned, the initial game setup and choosing the map location. The second video will be a tour of the GUI and just that. Then the third video will be actually getting started building your first town. And then from on from that, uh, where it goes will depend very much on well, the feedback of what people want to know. So if you want to know about a specific subject, feel free to chuck it in the comments. So that's enough of an introduction. Let's just get into the, the new game menu. In fact, what I'll do is I'll give you a quick tour of this menu. What you've got is the new game menu, load game, tutorials. What I would strongly recommend is that if you new, completely new to the game, that you do do the tutorials. Now, I wouldn't, you don't necessarily have to do all of them, but I would certainly say, say do basic mechanics energy and networks i think that's an amp meant to be an ampersand in the middle there um transportation is maybe not so important but if you've got the time i would certainly recommend going through with these tutorials what i will say is that the tutorials are very much about placing buildings and so in showing some very simple mechanics and to me uh, i think that's a good foundation but i don't think that they still give enough information to deal with all the new mechanics that have been added to the game and this is the reason for this series and then down here you've got the workshop now the workshop is interesting because of course subscribed items is and um, takes you into the list of all your mods and just to give you guys a bit of a horror story if i come into here um you can see i've got 79 pages of mods because this game has got a massive modding community once you start subscribing to mods it's a little bit of a going down the rabbit hole and as I see, you can see I've got 79 pages of mods. That's both building and vehicle mods. The building editor is if you want to create your own mods. Uh, and I can't comment on that because uh, it's, it's an area which I know very little about. And then the terrain editor here is actually for creating your own custom maps. Let's just get back down to uh, new game. We're going to click on new game. And once you come in here, the first thing you will get presented with is a list of maps that are available. Now, obviously, I've got nine pages because I've got lots and lots of custom maps, plus a few maps that I've created myself. Now, as far as I know, that what you get if you've got just the raw game that you've just loaded up the first time, you will have random map. I'm not sure about Flatland with Hills. This is a map that's been created by the devs. If it's not there, you can go to the workshop and do search Flatland with Hills, and you can get that mod and subscribe to it. 
Eastern Europe medium hills blank and Eastern Europe medium hills um, populated are the two original maps for when the game was released in 2019. And then down here we got another one called Slovakia, which is a map that's been added as part of the Metro update. What I will say is it's a brilliant map, but it's pretty difficult for a new player. So I certainly wouldn't recommend a new player doing it. In fact, what I'm going to say is that for your very first game or games, I would suggest playing the random map. And the reason for I'm recommending using the random map is that the, the random map generator in its default mode tends to scatter resources all over the map, which gives a, a lot more opportunities for being able to get to those resources where some of these other maps, especially customs maps, you, the, the, the resources are placed really to challenge the player. Now, the other thing I will say before we actually click on the random map and move forward is the fact if you see in the bottom right hand corner, you see these little black silhouettes. These are an indication of that the map is populated. What I suggest is for your first game is don't play on a populated map because the problem with populated maps is the game has a habit of spreading the population over lots and lots of small towns, which are how you so you have buildings and road structure, but you've got no infrastructure. And trying to get the infrastructure up and running on a popular map, populated map can be a bit tricky. In fact, what you invariably end up doing is pulling all the population into one location. So I would certainly not recommend playing on a populated map when you're first starting to learn the game. Anyway, we're going to click on random map and we're now on the, the options screen for setting the game parameter up, which is a little bit intimidating. And you can see they're suggesting easy and the first thing you want to do is click here and just remove the population from the random map. Now, as you can see across the top, it says very easy, easy, medium and hard. What I suggest is even if this is your first ever playthrough, click on hard. Simply because what that does is it moves all everything over that's of use. And what we're going to be doing is going through and I'm going to be taking things out. It's a lot easier to take things out than put things in. Now for the next, the button where it says realistic, realistic mode is a level of difficulty which relates to the fact that you can't auto purchase anything and you have to build every single building, road, everything in on the map using the construction site. So this is uh, more for experienced players. I know some of you may be a bit unsettled by the fact that I've set everything on hard. I think the important thing to remember is that the difficulty in this game comes from the added mechanics that you need to support and deal with when you're actually building your economy. There's a couple in here which do have graduations of difficulty. So, um, for example, the education system down here, which has got simple and complex, I would always recommend playing on complex from the get go. And that stays the same whether you're playing uh, when on you know medium, whole, hard, realistic, you name it. It, the, the model always remains the same. Well, what we're going to do is go back up. Now, money, I would recommend easy. I would never recommend playing on unlimited to learn the game because it would just get you into very bad habits, which would be very difficult to break. Uh, the only time I play on unlimited is if I want to test a specific mechanic, especially if there's a new release coming out, because it means you can put together a small town very quickly and then test the mechanic. Also, another way or unlimited is if you've got quite a difficult map and you want to try out things as well is just having a session on unlimited can be useful so i'd recommend easy for your first playthrough what that will do is give you i think it's 10 million rubles and i think it's two million dollars because there's two currencies in the game but i'll talk about that a lot more about that in later videos and then and of course down here what you can do is so you've got realistic mode here but you can actually do a realistic version with less mechanics enabled that's why this is put in as well now this one here it says unsatisfied citizens reaction is one that is variable and another little tip here is that all the ones that have tool tips on them and ones that are uh, mechanics that were first put in when the game first came out and the ones without are mechanics that have been subsequently added over time. I've just I'm, So what I'm going to do now is just run through there. It says if citizens don't get what they need, they will react with grumpiness. And then you've got reasonable. It says citizens don't get what they need. They will be cross and react accordingly. And then you've got hard. It says here if citizens don't get what they need, they will react very negatively. Now, I would recommend that even for your first game that you actually play on medium. 
um, because that gives you a challenge with managing your citizens' uh, requirements without actually getting into really serious trouble. Now, the next one down says energy management. Now, I, I would always recommend, even your first game, is play with buildings and vehicles as energy. Well, that means that you've got to supply power to buildings and you've got to supply fuel to vehicles. To be honest, I, the only time I would ever switch play with energy management disabled is, again, if I'm playing, I'm testing something on Unlimited and I don't want to mess around with actually having to put fuel in vehicles or or power buildings. I mean, I've never ever played on um, just with power lines, no fuel. But So I certainly recommend playing on that from the get-go. Now, the next one down here is water management. This is a new mechanic that has been added uh, recently or in the last year. What I suggest is you disable this. And also that also applies to seasons as well. Now, the reason I'm saying disable this is not because the mechanic is exceptionally difficult. The reason I'm recommending disabling is that when you play your first game, you, there's a couple of mechanics that you really need to get clear in your head. One is managing the distribution system. This is the supply of goods and resources around the map. And, and the second one is that to really build a big economy, you've got to understand the construction process, which in itself is quite complex. Water on the surface, this, it does look simple because all you do is put down, put in a water supply. But there are some number of subtleties that can get you into trouble, especially with relay, laying out the water systems. And what I'll be doing is, is I'll be talking about water management as a, as a separate video. And that also applies to seasons. What seasons does is add a summer and a winter. And what that also makes the mix is the temperature more active. Now, one of the consequences of um, winter is that you've got to heat the buildings. And again, it's it's not a difficult mechanic to build, but it's a, a mechanic that can lead you into all sorts of traps. Because one thing is in the winter, you've got to build a technical office in order to have snow plows, which will then clear the snow. And another one is that if you want to learn farming, probably the first way you want to get a feel for farming is with season switched off because what happens with farming then is that you whenever a crop is harvested the next one is sown with a seasons enabled you only get one harvest a year and the, the, the growing season starts around the 4th of march and then it, it goes through to about the middle of may then you get the growing season then the end of july the harvesters go out which run right through until the first snows come again it's a, a relatively simple mechanic but it's it can be a bit of a distraction so i certainly recommend switching it off for your first game and i, I think also it's worth no, no, noting that there is an option in the game menu once you're on the map to re-enable those but i will talk about that in probably video three which is when we're actually starting to build the first town now the next one is fires uh you can switch fires off completely but if you do that you lose the fire stations and so what I would suggest is you actually switch this down to normal. Again, it's just a question of building fire stations and to ensure that you've got fire coverage. It's not a difficult mechanic to master. Frequent can be a bit irritating, especially when you're starting out in realistic mode. But generally, fires aren't a major threat in this game as long as you've got a fire station. Global events is a mechanic that's been around from the beginning. This is here. Enable global events like epidemics, market prices and changes. Well... I'll be completely upfront. I've, I've never had a problem with global events and I don't pay any attention to them. I, I feel this is an element of the game that still needs to be fleshed out a little bit because like if you have an epidemic, it just means you get an increased number of sickness. If you've got good hospital cover, then you can deal with it. Price changes are normally quite small. There is a percentage of 5%. And to be honest, you just don't notice them. Similarly with pollution, now pollution is like any games, if you've ever played City Skylines, the, the general rule is, that, which is, well, most city building type games, is you don't build heavy industry next to your residence. It's not a major issue as long as you maintain that factor, you're aware of the spread of the pollution. And there is, a, in the game, there is a pollution monitor that will show you how far the pollution is actually spread. So leave that enabled, it's not a big problem. 
Now, education, I would always recommend that you play on complex. Again, it's a, a relatively simple mechanic. You've just got to build kindergartens, schools and universities. Crime and justice, I've actually debated on this one. And I think for a first game, I would switch it off. The reason being is that it's, it is a distraction. And, it's, and this is one that you can switch on once you've got your first town built. But not having to think about it from the get-go is... Uh, a bit of an advantage when you've got to concentrate on other things now the next one down traffic simulation and the way this works is if you have simple what happens is the vehicles just charge up and down the roads and when they get to a junction they fight it out between themselves i would suggest playing on complex the what hap what complex means is that traffic management system implements the rule of give way to the right so that means if you've got two vehicles approaching a, a junction the vehicles will always give way to the right to get priority. Now, there is a whole set of um, road signs where you can set up priorities. Now, if you live in Europe, you'll be aware of the yellow diamonds. You can set those in the game, and it's a relatively easy uh, uh, mechanic to manage. And also, when you're first starting out, the amount of traffic you've got it isn't a problem anyway. Now, research, I'd leave that enable. It says some buildings can be locked due to lack of, of research is completed. The research in this game is very simple. You just build a university and you are not part of the research. Uh, I think when the waste update comes out, the research will be further enhanced with some changes. It's not a showstopper as long as you've got a good education system going. And uh, to be honest, I've never had a problem with research. I think at the moment there's only three buildings that uh, you need to be researched and they tend to be late game type buildings. Now the next one is I would say is optional. I would I'm going to play on always day, and if you're playing your first game, I would re recommend always day, simply because what happens is is when when you have a day night cycle, when it gets dark, it's very difficult to see what you're doing, and there is a marginal increase in power, and of course because I'm making a YouTube video, um, and there's no point in me having the day cycle on because you guys won't actually see anything. Now, the next one down, start year is 1960, 1970, 1980. The game defaults to 1970. Uh, I think if you're playing your first game and you're not going to be playing for very long, 1970 is okay. But I, what I would recommend is that if you are planning on doing a long series, I would start in 1960. The reason for that is that once you get up around 2000, there can be a little bit a few issues with um, some vehicles starting to disappear, but that can be fixed with the next option. This series is start in 1960, simply because I'm a bit more familiar with the vehicles that are available in 1960, and therefore uh, I, it just makes it a bit easier to do this tutorial. Now the last one is vehicle availability. Now you've got all lock according to year when they've been introduced but never expire, and then well, what you and the third one is vehicles are available from the year they have been introduced and expire after the year which their production is ended. What this is referring to is the fact that every vehicle in the game has a start date and an end date. There's a few that basically the end date so far in the future it goes up some of them go up to 2021. So it means that you get vehicles coming in and they're available and then you will get a notification to say last chance to buy. I would strongly recommend against having all vehicles available especially if you start getting modded in because the lists get so big trying to um, pick out the relevant vehicles will be a little bit difficult now lock and never expire is something that you uh, is an option but i think for the purposes of this series we're going to have lock according to year so that vehicles will disappear so you, you can get a feel for how that mechanic works. So that's what we're going to be going with. And the reason behind this profile is so that and for a first game, you're able to focus on uh, some of the key mechanics. And the two key, key mechanics which you do really need to focus on, on is understanding how the automatic distribution system works and also getting, getting your head around the basics of construction because these are the two kind of cornerstones of building a successful economy but if you want to um, but there's no reason why you can't select your own options if you want to go for it anyway so we're going to now click start game and what you get now because we're on a random map we've actually got this and what i would say and you can play with the sliders but i think for a first game just leave it the way it is 
what I suggest is that you ensure don't build anything is is uh, clicked because what will happen is if you put build cities, build cities and roads, what you get is an infrastructure on the map which may not fit what what you will want to do. And I think it's far better for a first game is just to start on a blank map. So what I'm going to do now is just click start game and I'll see you once we get onto the actual game map. So here we are, we've arrived on the map and the first thing you want to do is press the space bar and simply because if, if when you're playing time is important especially when you're playing on the mall with every every mechanic enabled because you've only got a certain amount of time before the winter comes in so what you want to do is to pause while you're looking around the second thing you want to do is come up here and actually do a save as and save the map now you do that for two reasons the first one is the fact that there's a possibility that when you start out and build something things can go wrong and by saving the random map you've got the ability to restart again and the second reason is that you want to create a save game because the game doesn't auto save on exit so you've got to get in the habit of just coming up and it's a lot easier just to get come up here and just save just before you quit because if you see here it doesn't it says quit to desktop quit the menu so it doesn't say save and quit so that's very important there's nothing more annoying than quitting out very quickly and then finding out that you've lost a big chunk of work. When you when you first land on the map, if I open up, come down the bottom right hand corner, you see a spyglass, come in here, you can click on the chevrons and drag out. You always start in the centre of the map here. And if there's a mountain in the centre, you get a nice close up view of the grass. But So don't be disconcerted if you, that's what you get. What we've got to do now is choose a starting location. Now the first thing I want to draw your attention to is that the map is pretty big and that means that when you think at a location don't underestimate the distances involved in here now i've been playing this game since 2019 when it first came out and i've only ever substantially filled the map twice once off camera when i was playing well back in 2019 and and i built up a population of just under a hundred thousand across the map so it gives you an idea of how big your economy's got to get to cover the map and i've also done my seven crosses series where i got to 110,000 population and i still never cover completely covered the map so don't underestimate the distances that need to be go when you're actually considering where your starting location is and where the the nearest available resources are now so but the actual play area of the map is we see the red line and the blue line forming the square now the red line is the Soviet border and the blue line is the NATO border. From the point of view of finding our starting location, because of course we got 10 million rubles to spend, we're looking for starting locations on the on the down the left hand side and across the bottom. I mean a perfect starting location, which the game hasn't given us here, is to have a, a Soviet star uh, connection and a NATO connection relatively close together. Now, the next thing you've got to do when considering a starting location is look at the res available resources down the up in the top right here, and that's coal, iron, oil, uranium, and bauxite. Now, uranium and bauxite are very much late game resources. So for a first playthrough, you can virtually ignore those because if you look at the distribution, the uranium is quite some distance across the map. So if you started here, it's going to take a long time to get to it. But the resources you're most interested in is coal, iron, and oil. And what, if you if you don't like if you want to go and check something out, if you click on the thing, it actually locks that resource. So we've got coal down here, and we've got a little bit of iron here. I'm actually liking this start in the bottom center here um, and also if you're playing with water enabled you've got to look at proximity for rivers and lakes because at the moment unless you use a mod the that you've got to dump your sewage even if it's been treated into a water source so that's something else you need to consider I'm, i am liking this so we're just going to go down here so we got here but what we got is a haha <laughs> medium. Okay, that's this is I can tell it's a medium custom shed simply because it's got a road and a rail, but the problem is we have no power because most of them have a power connection. This one doesn't. So what we'll do is we'll scoot down here. And we've got what we've got here is a small one with a power connection here. 
Now that's not a major disaster from the perspective of when you are first starting out with um, 10 million because we can run power from here up to here. So this is a potential start, but let's just see, see if I can find uh, anything that got coal, iron there that's around the back, a little bit of oil. So we got maybe another start here. Um, this one is probably a better start because it's got a medium custom shed with a, uh, a power supply right next to it. I'm actually looking for one thing I have noticed with custom maps is the, the game isn't that generous with respect to large custom sheds, but a small, a medium one isn't a disaster. And for your first game, you're certainly looking for a medium connection. The reason for that is that you want to connect and play with rail and having a connection like this close by is not is pretty good. The only minor complication with this is the fact that the power supply could interfere with the railway. But in video in but in video three of this series, if we do start with this location, I'll talk a little bit more about those implications. I think part of the problem is that the lake up here has kind of messed up the game a little bit we got no connections up here i think what we got up here when well, we can't use it but this is an example of a large connection and what you've got here is a large connection but again there's no power supply here at all this is one of the problems with random maps but to be completely upfront if if, if the, you don't see a location on here that's really fit you feel that you can work with just what you're going to do is just quit back to the main menu, come in, and the game remembers what you've selected while in, in a session. And once you quit the game, then it resets back to defaults. But And what you can do is just come in and regenerate the map. Actually, if this was a Soviet start, this wouldn't be too bad, actually, because you've got a large custom shed there, a power supply there, and a small one there, a malt and another one there. Actually, it's quite a good array, actually. But we're going to have to... Um, what was the one we were going for? So, so I think we're going to... Not, not that one. Uh, where was the medium one that we had? Ah, lost it. It's this, is it this one? Um, we got... Coal, iron and oil. Um, if you don't click off, you can just flip through them like this. It was is it this one. Let me just see. Ah, actually, oh wow, we got a big one here. Okay. So I missed that big one in the center there because it, it was hidden by the lake. Um, so we got some coal and iron close by and oil. Now there's one more resource which is that you do need if you're going to get heavily into construction, and that is gravel. And what you're looking for is things like this. Now, what the game will do is paint some on the map. Um, I'm not seeing... Oh, 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 wow. This is going to be... So we got here. And, and the way to check these is if you come in here, go to construction industry, get gravel. That will give us a, a gravel 80, 59%. We could get two gravel there. Yeah, I think this is an ideal start, actually. So this is where we're going to start for the series. We've got a large custom shed that's <laughs> where the road goes out. I think that's what Kuz there. We've got a power supply slightly on the wrong side, but we can work around it. It's in a reasonable location here. Just up the road here, we've got we got this medium um, customs shed as well. So we've got two custom sheds close together. Now the final consideration that is you're looking for a fairly large amount of flat space. We've also got a lake close by for running sewage too. So we're probably thinking town in this area. We've got some quite nice, nice large flat areas. Press F2, you can see the contours of the map. And if it's like white contours like this, that means this area is possibly flat enough for a farm because that's a, a major source of income when you first get going if you can build a farm yeah 
yeah i'm liking this as a starting location so this is where we're going to be starting so i think that's probably enough for this video the next video will be just a tour of the interface talking about what the different options are and what way you'd actually use them and which ones are relevant for your first game and then the third video will actually get down to planning and building and there will be a section in there about some of the pits um the kind of tricks and traps that they can get caught in when you actually first start in your first town so i hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it interesting and until next time whatever you do enjoy your gaming